uh, will be uh, Tom Swartz, uh, who's a data scientist at, uh, at Orbital Insight, um, who will be talking about satellite imagery and small area poverty estimation. Thanks to satellite imagery. So we've been doing research with the World Bank Group, uh, doing small area poverty estimation using high, me <coughs> high and medium satellite, high and medium resolution satellite imagery. So we have a couple goals for this project. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate poverty rates in Mexico. So we have census ground truth from the Mexican government and we use satellite imagery to estimate the ground uh, to create a model that will directly map, uh, that will directly create poverty estimates. Within that research, we're doing a little bit of experimenting. So we're trying to see how medium resolution and high resolution uh, creates different estimates and how the performance varies between those two. Furthermore, we're also looking at how estimates are better or worse in urban and rural areas. Lastly, we're doing uh, land use estimation and land use uh, mapping, some of the stuff Gordon was just talking about, uh, and we're gonna use those as additional predictors on top of the direct poverty estimates. The goal is to create um, a map like this, so this is one of the preliminary final outputs that we've created. These are all the municipalities in Mexico, so approximately two and a half thousand um, municipalities. And what this is, is this is the estimated poverty rates uh, for the urban portions of each of these municipalities. So these are all the municipalities. Um, these comprise both urban and rural areas. This is the percentage of the population that we estimate to be, um, that we estimate to be poor in the urban portions of those municipalities. So in, the, in this map, areas that are dark, such as the black regions, are areas that are relatively poor, and areas that are bright are areas that are relatively well off. So this is, this is the goal of this project, to create this kind of, this kind of map. What we have, um, we have satellite imagery from high resolution satellite imagery, so that's pixels that are approximately 30 to 50 centimeters in ground distance, and we have medium resolution imagery. That's three to five meters in ground distance. So those show different things. High resolution imagery, you can see things such as cars, you can see quite a lot of more detail in the image, but the images are, tend to be smaller, so the context is less great. Um, this is a high resolution image of Mexico City. The goal here is to predict for this image what percentage of the population falls into three different buckets. We use from the Mexican government, there's two official poverty lines that we're looking at. There's a severe poverty line, that's uh, what we're calling the severe poverty bin, so that's below the minimum well-being poverty line. There's a moderate poverty bin, which is above that and below the well-being poverty line, and, those, and then there's those who are classified as not poor. So the goal is to take this image and then predict for this image what percentage of the population that falls within this image are uh, in each of the bins. What we do is we train a convolutional neural network. So that's the kind of architectures uh, in computer vision that have achieved state-of-the-art results in most computer vision tasks to go directly from this image to predict this poverty distribution. Obviously, this is something that people have wanted to do for a long time, and people have talked about a number of different ways that people have been historically doing this. So nighttime lights, I think this, you actually probably showed this exact image. Um, that's obviously very useful and presents a lot of good data. However, there's clearly a number of problems that people have discussed with this strategy. There's also um, something you could do is you could create intermediate features. So in other work that we've done with the World Bank Group, We've created intermediate features, such as we've counted cars. Uh, we've estimated building heights by estimating shadows. Uh, you could look at palapas. These would be intermediate features that you could use and then feed into a regression to estimate poverty rates in that area. So this is work that we've done in Sri Lanka. There's also work by the Stanford Group, Gene and Burke et al. They've trained a convolutional neural network to go from daytime visual imagery to nighttime lights and then used features from that convolutional neural network to predict poverty. What we've been doing is we've been directly predicting from the image to the, um, to the poverty rates. It's not clear uh, yet which of these approaches is like most effective, and they might vary depending on where we're looking. Um, but this is the first uh, time that we know of, of going directly from the imagery to the poverty rates using computer vision. So the World Bank, they provided, with, uh, they provided us with ground truth data for approximately 800 municipalities in Mexico. So as I said, there's about 2,500, and then withheld approximately 60 or so municipalities as like validation data. So we would submit the results, so we would train on that, those 800 municipalities, and then we would submit the results to the World Bank Group. 
So these are uh, actual results from that withheld from withheld municipalities. So at Orbital Insight, we're not 100% sure what the ground truth is for these, but these are what are network classified. So the image on the left is an image that's relatively well off, and the image on the right is an image that is relatively poor. Intuitively, when we look at it, what we see is the image on the left has wide roads, they're well paved, it's got trees, uh, the buildings are relatively organized, while the image on the right, the roads look uh, unpaved, it just seems significantly less organized, and you can see that there's a substantial difference in the roof types between these. So we don't actually train the neural network to like look for specific features. These are the kind of things that intuitively we think that like the, as a human we would pick up on, but it's not necessarily picking up on these features. It could be learning something else. Those were high resolution images that I was showing. These are examples of the medium resolution images. So these pixels, uh, the distance in these pixels is three meters. Uh, these are from Planet, and the previous images were from Digital Globe. So these are similar to the last slide. The image on the left is a relatively well-off area, while an image on the right is relatively poor. Again, we see that the image on the left has um, a good amount of development, and there's like a clear grid structure, while the image on the right is like a less urbanized area. So all of the images I've shown so far have been for urban areas. Uh, these are all classified as urban areas by the Mexican census. One of the results of this study uh, in terms of, or the, one of the preliminary results um, in terms of experiments was seeing how we did in urban areas compared to rural areas, or sorry, trying to see in urban areas how high resolution imagery and medium resolution uh, imagery stack up and the difference in performance between the two of them. One of the perhaps more surprising results was that the medium resolution imagery achieved results that were nearly as good as high resolution imagery. So not quite as good, you can't see quite as much detail, so it's not surprising that the high resolution imagery would be better, but it's, um, the difference was probably smaller than we expected. This is definitely useful for a number of reasons. As the like, number of constellations of these satellites expands, that um, means that we can, create high we can create these poverty maps in near real time with a lot better spatial, uh, uh, a lot better spatial coverage particularly in the rural areas where the high resolution providers take fewer images. And we can do this with a lot of temporal frequency. So we can create these maps like every quarter, every month, or whatever is necessary once we've trained these algorithms. So all of the results um, that I'm going to show, uh, the first map that I showed, the scatter plots I'm going to show in the next couple slides, these are all from the medium resolution uh, section of the paper. So these are the results um, on the withheld municipalities. So this is the urban estimates uh, for the withheld municipalities. So you have on the, the left scatter plot is the predicted value of the first bin, so that's severe poverty, and the image on the right is the, is the sum of the first two bins. So everybody who's poor, whether they're moderate or severely poor. Uh, the x-axis is the true value, and the y-axis is the predicted value. Uh, and then there's also the r squared um, in, the top, in the top right corners. Uh, again, this is for the urban portions of the municipalities. So we see here uh, that, it, uh, that it explains about 40 to 50% of the variation. So for those who aren't familiar, R squared can be interpreted as the percent of the variation in the ground truth that is explained by the model. So it does a reasonably good job um, in urban areas. Definitely like for policy purposes, you'd probably want it to be better. But as a first start, it's pretty good. We see that in rural areas, it does less well. So there's probably a number of reasons that this is the case. I think in general, the task for rural regions is more difficult. If you think about um, what we're looking at when we look at the satellite images, in urban areas, by definition, the images of those areas are like associated with human development, buildings, um, urbanization. Well, in rural areas, there's large amounts of areas that aren't really associated with human activity. So, it's going to be a harder task to associate the ground truth for that whole municipality with the specific parts of, the, of that rural uh, portions of that municipality, where in the urban areas, you'd expect there to be a little bit more obvious uh, the connection between the two of them. So we do think it's a harder task, and we see here that the scatter plots definitely look uh, less good. We see that it predicts uh, quite closely to the mean, um, and the R squareds are def definitely lower across the board. So taking that algorithm, uh, we run, so this is the same 
map as I was showing earlier, but for the rural portions of the municipalities. So again, areas that are dark, such as the black regions, are areas that are estimated to be very poor, where areas that are brighter are estimated to be better off. So that's what we see when we estimate um, when we estimate it for the whole country. So this is from data from 2016, um, but we could estimate this, especially as as these are from the medium resolution imagery, uh, imagery providers, as the data becomes more and more available and there's more frequency, we could estimate this uh, quite a bit more frequently as we go forward. As I was saying, we also there was also a land use aspect to this research. So land use classification is something that we work on quite a bit at Orbital Insight. So the goal for this task is to look at an image and then for every image, for every pixel in the image to classify and say, does this pixel belong to a building? Does it belong to a road, uh, grass, that kind of thing. So what we've done here, this is an image of Mexico City, uh, a planet image, so medium resolution. Um, and then we've classified, we've classified whether or not each pixel belongs to a road or a building. There's also classifications in this model for grass, forest, that kind of thing. I don't show them here. Uh, we see in these images on the second and third panel, um, areas that are dark blue are areas that are classified or are estimated to have a low probability of belonging to that class, where areas that are green are estimated to have a high probability. So we see in general that it picks up, um, it picks up the like, roads pattern and the buildings pattern. Uh, we're definitely still working on these, these algorithms to improve them. Um, but you can see how this works on a small scale, and then we can, we can run it on a national scale. So we can run these land use algorithms um, using these high resolution image, images, or excuse me, using these medium resolution images that are taken quite frequently, we can run it and create a land use map for an entire country. So this is uh, all the cloud free regions, um, all the regions for which we had a cloud free, cloud free image in 2016. And what it's showing is the relative frequency of roads. So areas that have a lot of roads, such as the cities that are circled, show up as bright, and areas that are dark have like a low, um, a low frequency of roads. What we can also do is we can roll this basically up, and we can do this for every class. So for grass, water, that kind of thing, we can roll it up and then aggregate it to the municipality level. Those uh, percentages, of, so then for each municipality, you get what is the percentage that is a road, what is the percentage that is a forest, those can be then used as additional poverty predictors on top of the direct estimate we did. You could also um, create polygons with this. You can create maps of the entire country. You can, uh, and you can look at time, uh, you can look at change over time. So as you create these maps going forward, you can see where development is happening and where um, things are changing. So this is definitely useful for a number of different applications. The results for incorporating this into the land, into the poverty prediction we haven't done yet, uh, but we think that it should help the final estimates of poverty. So in conclusion, um, the results are definitely encouraging, particularly in urban areas. Uh, again, you'd probably expect them to, we'd want them to improve further, but 0.4 to 0.5 kind of range of R squared, and it's a little bit higher for the high resolution images, but the same kind of range um, is pretty good. Um, unfortunately, the rural results are definitely not quite where we'd want them to be yet. Also, we see similar results for the medium and high resolution images um, in the urban areas. And then uh, the national land use estimates uh, are still being incorporated into the final predictions, but we do expect those to have a positive uh, impact on the R squared values. Thank you.